You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. I've been doing really well. It's been a, it's been a little bit crazy in my life between my shoot job and my kids just finished up basketball and now we're starting baseball here soon. We had our baseball draft. It was super exciting. Um, I wanted to be uh, the Cincinnati Reds for, you know, the Macho Man Randy Savage since he had played for the Reds. But we ended up having to be the uh, Chicago Cubs, so that's not too bad. Oh, man. So, like, I want to say baseball's like a huge thing in, in Indiana, isn't it? Uh, like, no, not really. Not really. really? It's it's the Florida and uh, California that it's it's a really big thing. It was, it was a bigger thing when I was a kid. Um, you know, when I was a kid, we, you know, I was in a small town. We fielded maybe six or seven teams. Uh, this year, uh, for our, my baseball league and our age group, there's only going to be three teams. So we've got to join up. We've got to play against a, another, uh, league's teams. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting this year. You know what's making a big comeback in, in Indiana? Well, not a comeback, but making a, re, uh, a dent in Indiana is lacrosse, which is normally really? a northeast uh, sport, uh, but but it's it's becoming bigger in Indiana. You know that's so weird that you mentioned that thing because I took my kids to the park uh, yesterday, and there was actually you know some guys in their uh, practice was like a lacrosse practice session going on, and I was sitting there like I don't believe in like my thirty plus years I've actually sat down and watched the lacrosse game. And I never realized how fast-paced that game really is and how much skill it really takes. All right, I'm going to get real nerdy on you here for a second. Who is the only member of both the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame and the uh, Professional Football Hall of Fame? There was somebody in the, there was somebody in the NFL who played lacrosse? Uh, there, there is a man that is in both of those Hall of Fames. Um, um, uh, Doug Flutie? No! <laughs> this this guy is about the opposite of, of Doug Flutie as you can get. Jim Brown. J- really? Jim Brown played lacrosse in, in college, and, and he was phenomenal, and he had to decide he had to give lacrosse up to make more money uh, in the NFL. Okay, so you officially blew my mind. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, buddy. Hey, uh, huh? before we started the show off, you said that you had a crazy weekend. Give our listeners some details. Uh, so this weekend, um, well, first of all, Saturday I was in uh, Princeton, West Virginia, for uh, West Virginia Championship Wrestling, where I'm the heavyweight champion. I uh, had a match against um, someone who's appeared, actually uh, a participant in the Tag Team Apocalypto, um, Aaron Biggs, who's a part of the uh, Sandwich Squad at CWS Mid-Atlantic here in North Carolina and at Nova Pro Wrestling in Virginia. Um, very hard, intense match. Uh, because Aaron Biggs is like five inches taller than me and that weighs me uh, legitimately by 100 pounds, you know, I had to show my speed and agility. So I, I pulled a couple of tricks out in the back that I haven't done in years, Zane. Um, I actually did like a head scissors. Uh, I did a, a Frankensteiner, or as you know, nowadays most fans call it the Hurricanrana. I'm an old school kind of guy, so I still call it Frankensteiner. Um, <laughs> and I even did a Tope Suicida, you know. So, uh, oh wow, it was a, yeah. So it, it was a lot of like high flying from from Will Huxley's Saturday night, uh, packed house. Uh, the Hurricane Shane Helms was in the building. Bullet Club members uh, Adam Page and Chase Owens were in the building. Uh, former NWA two-time uh, NWA World Tag Team Champions. The Heat Seekers were there. Um, our friend of the show, uh, the PWI, Mr. PWI 500, uh, Timmy Lou Retton was in the building. Uh, so it was really fun. Like, Saturday night was real fun. Like, after my match and stuff, uh, the Hurricane kind of walked up to me and looked at me, uh, kind of stood beside me in his superhero pose, uh, and looked at me and was like, hey, well, aren't you, you, you can fly for a fat guy, huh? So that was pretty <laughs> impressive. <laughs> So I didn't know if that was like a compliment or an insult. Uh, I took it as a compliment because I'm a huge, you know, a uh, huge Hurricane fan. So because he kind of gave me a backhanded compliment, I was like, later on in the night, I kind of looked at him. I was like, you know, I just want to let you know I've been the biggest fan of yours since I was like in the ninth grade. Actually, in the eighth grade when you were like a <laughs> member of three count. Um, 
I was like, I'm a huge fan of yours. We used a three count, and then you were Sugar Shane, and it was a hurricane. Like, me and my friends were in high school, you know, like, doing your poses all the time. So I'm stop. There's a hurricane coming. So I got a chance to make him feel really old. Uh, <laughs> uh, this Sunday, um, I had a match at Firestar Pro Wrestling. Uh, Firestar Pro Wrestling presents Zone 1, which is kind of like their, their student show. Um, you know, Zane, I like to give back and stuff whenever I can. <laughs> and work with a lot of young talent. I like to work with a lot of young talent, whatever possible stuff, um, you know, and give them the opportunity that, that a lot of guys don't get stuff to work with, like guys that have as much experience as I do and stuff. So, um, wrestled a, a really good guy from Ohio named, uh, DeGrette Bundles. Um, I, I really feel like guys that the wrestling world is going to hear about this guy in the next five, six years. Uh, you know, this guy's really making moves, not only in wrestling, but in, uh, modeling and TV and stuff. Uh, so he's gonna be a name. He's actually gonna be a really big name in the next five, six years. There's a lot of things going on and stuff. So that was my weekend. West Virginia, Greensboro, North Carolina, diving, flying, Frankensteiners. It's pretty fun. Well, that sounds cool. And too bad we were not ready for the three count because that would have been a great transition to the three count. But uh, I want to uh, thank uh, Kelly Kev for being able to come back uh, this week. He was on an extended work trip. Last week, and I'm glad you made it home safely. Uh, anything? Were you able to uh, see the franchise Shane Douglas or anything uh, while you were in Pittsburgh last week? No, I did not get to see the franchise Shane Douglas, and I did not run back into our old friend Virgil, even though I know he's somewhere there in the area. Um, however, I did happen to have some encounters uh, with a couple of notable personalities. I got to meet the great. Jim Cornette and his wife, Stacy the Cat. Wait a minute, not Stacy. No, wrong person. I'm going to have to go back and edit that, aren't I? Um, uh, no, no. Right, keep it in. We're nervous. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, uh, no. Jim Cornette's wife, Stacy, uh, better known as Sin in Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh, she was a manager for a few years there when he was uh, there and and working with OVW and stuff. But I got to met the, meet them and... Uh, had had a blast with them and uh that was great and while i did, wait pardon me did they bring uh harley quinn with them no no harley quinn uh, okay right. but but jim Cornette had it had his big comic book collection out got an autograph with him got a picture it was fun going back to the hotel room i didn't even notice it until somebody pointed it out to me but walked right in front of me and i had my head down buried in my phone nature boy rick flair crossed my path Woo! Woo! He was. Oh. He he was head, but he was heading back to the suite. It was after the convention, and you know, my my policy is that you know wrestlers are on the clock when they're at the convention or at the wrestling show. They're not at the wrestling show or the convention. They're off the clock. So, you know, I yeah, didn't say. But the nature boy is always the nature boy. Oh, he is. He is, and, and he had, he had some wonderful eye candy on his arm. I don't know who she is, uh, but uh, they they were heading to the penthouse suite. That was for sure. All right, all right. Was this down in Lexcon? Um, no, it was in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So. Uh, well, I just posted on the Facebook page when Will, when you asked me how I was doing, I neglected to mention that Drew Skills killed me last weekend. Um, he uh, lost his title at the All Star Pro Wrestling uh, event. He was the heavyweight champion there, and it. End up turning into a four-way match between uh, Drew Skills, Flash Flanagan, the Greatest Show on Earth, Jeremy Court, or excuse me, Greatest Show on Earth, Trevor Court, and uh, Warfare Jeremy Hadley. And that was all set up by our friend uh, the Prophet, who is now going by Mister Richard Wright, because he's the right guy at the right time. And uh, so. Uh, Jeremy Hadley ended up winning the match through some shenanigans, did not pin Drew Skills. He got upset at me for announcing uh, a winner that was not him. And so he uh, picked me up and, and chucked me onto a table. Unfortunately, the table did not break. Um, one of the legs bent. And uh, so uh, I, I got slammed twice on a table but did not go through it. And... Uh, then he ended up turning the table over uh, where one of the legs was on my uh, throat and hitting it with a chair a couple times. So uh, if anybody is a fan of ours on the Facebook page, make sure to check out that video. 
Well, it seems like uh, that's going to be a pattern for Drew uh, because we all know, like, the next three weeks. In three weeks, you know, I'm heading up to Indiana, and uh, I get to finally put my hands on Drew Skills, and it looks like he's going to lose another title in a multi-person match. How awesome is that? <laughs> Well, that would be at Smash Fest in Valparaiso, Indiana, uh, on <clears throat> Saturday, April 8th. And it's a huge fan fest. I know I'm riding up there with, uh, Bushwhacker Luke, uh, WWE Hall of Famer Bushwhacker Luke. I know that Raven is going to be, uh, the general manager that evening. Uh, our buddy Kevin Thorne is going to be there in the Mordecai character. Uh, Bobby Eaton is scheduled to be there. Uh, Bobby Fulton is scheduled to be there. PN News is scheduled to be there. And tell us about this, uh, this match that between you and Drew Skills and there's a couple other participants. Yeah, it's, uh, it's me, Drew Skills, uh, also a friend of the show, Troy Miller, um, my buddy, Sugar Duckerton. Um, it was supposed to be DJ Z, but he got, re- because of, prior obligations he had to back out. Uh, I forgot the name of the, the guy who replaced him. Do you know his name, Zane? I'm trying to find it right now. It's not Aim, um, is it? No. Um, there's one other guy, and then there's Marty Jannetty, uh, soon to be future WWE Hall of Famer Marty Jannetty. In my opinion, already a Hall of Famer Marty Jannetty and stuff. Uh, it's a six-man, uh, free-for-all, basically, you want to say, six-way match for the uh, Smash Mouth Heavyweight title. Um you know, really, hey, I'm really excited just to be there at Smash Mouth. Um, I've been talking to Jeremy for, for years now, for over a year now, uh, trying to get our schedules right and stuff to when I can make an appearance at one of the shows and stuff. Uh, and it just so happened that, you know, this upcoming show, April 8th, um, you know, the stars around where I was able to actually make it up to Indiana and everything. I think the only bad thing about that weekend is that, unfortunately, uh, I won't be able to attend Heroes and Legends the next day. Uh, I have to come back to North Carolina um for a show back here in carolina um that sunday afternoon so you know that's the only bad thing about that you know i I don't get to be a heroes of legends but i will be i'm predicting that i will leave indiana uh, a couple of pounds heavier it's uh gpa is the uh, sixth participant in that match that's right that's right Um, hey what are you doing doing the night before that are you coming up that the night before um, I, right now I'm talking to some friends and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of trainees and stuff and, and green kids here in North Carolina that really want to travel up there with me. So I might have, you know, a car load full of kids and stuff, uh, to help out at the show and help out at the gimmick table and everything. Uh, so I'm thinking that we're probably going to meet up. I'm probably going to stop and see some friends in Kentucky. Hint, hint, Killer Kev might stop in Kentucky. I got to stop in Hazard, Kentucky anyway to see one friend. So I might stop and see Killer Kev, pick him up along the way also. Um, and then head up to uh, Indiana. Well, if if you're available that Friday night, April 7th, I'm going to be on a show with uh, Bushwhacker Luke and uh, Rosemary uh, from Decay will be there. Um, Great show at Mercy Road Church in Carmel, Indiana, which is a suburb of Indianapolis. So I might have a booking for you if, if you want to come up that night before. Oh, totally. Um, we'll talk about it after the show then. Um, you know, I'm always willing to travel and stuff and, and get on the road and do what I got to do. Uh, it, it just means it seems like, you know, that's going to be like the biggest weekend for wrestling in the state of Indiana. It seems like you have two of the biggest shows um, in the state and like back to back, which is always a good thing. Um, hopefully, you know, and of course, you know, Jeremy and uh, uh, Smash Mouth and uh, Heroes of Legends have a great, you know, chemistry and stuff, and the owners and stuff really get along with each other. So it's really cool that they're able to have, you know, two huge shows back to back. Well, let, let's count three shows then that Friday night, back to back to back. Then let's say three shows. That's a fun-filled weekend right there, Jesus. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> all right. Anything else you want to uh, talk about before we get into the three count? No, I, I really want to hear what you got for the three count this week, Zay. Um, okay, well, this, this this three count is all about non wrestling and wrestling, and you'll you'll get it here in a minute. So, count one: Southpaw Regional Wrestling, which is a glorified advertisement for um, KFC uh, Georgia Gold, has taken over social media. Have you had a chance to check out uh, 
Southpaw Regional Wrestling. Oh, yes, definitely. As a matter of fact, I watched like four episodes of it. Um, in my opinion, I think it's a caricature of Jim Crockett Promotions, uh, and not just Jim Crockett Promotions, but Southern Wrestling in general. I think that uh, Southpaw Championship Wrestling, whatever the name of Southpaw, is Vince McMahon's idea of what Southern Wrestling, uh, as he likes to put it, is. That, uh, but, I do but not I, disagree with that at all. But but the the bad part is that it's it's more entertaining than anything we've seen on Raw or SmackDown in a while. Oh, it's totally more entertaining. Um, who? I mean, of course, you know Luke Gallows is a funny guy. <laughs> Excuse me. You you already knew he was a funny guy. Um, you know, with the whole Fester gimmick and then with the the uh, Straight Edge Society and stuff he did in New Japan. Uh, but who the fuck at him? And Carl Anderson could be so hilarious and look so ridiculous uh, with hair. You know what I'm saying? Um, that and then, of course, you know John Cena as the commentator um, <laughs> it is is just nonstop, um, just laughs. Period. Uh, in my opinion, I think I post. I actually posted on a friend of mine's uh, page on one of his posts. Sugar Duckerton actually commented on Sugar Duckerton's post because that's how I actually found out about it. Was um. The KFC commercial with Ric Flair, the not Ric Flair, Ric Flair, Mm -hmm. um, I actually posted, I was like, is that a shoot at uh, the nature boy Paul Lee? Because there's a a wrestler in Georgia named Paul Lee who does this. He's a complete 100% ripoff of Ric Flair. Uh, Blonde hair, the robes, the music. uh, He does the strut, the woo, the figure four, the chops, or whatever. Like, if you, he is like the, the, Big Lots version of Rick, of Ric Flair. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, of course, I asked, I was like, is that a jab at Paul Lee? You know, and everybody was like, I don't know. It seems like it is, but maybe it's just this man just picking fun at all Southern wrestling in particular. Mm-hmm. Well, I, you know, I, I love uh, John Cena as Lance Catamaran where he's talking about the six weeks he spent outside uh, Utica, New York, as a newscaster. Um, Our buddies over at WrestleCrap uh, talked about how maybe he spent some time with uh, Mike Check there uh, in Utica. Um, Fandango as uh, Chet Cheddarfield, he's hilarious. And uh, you'd mention him. I, I love uh, Anderson as Chad Too Bad, and I've already said that at Lethal Leap Year, that uh, uh, Chad Too Bad is going to be inducted in the Beards and Zubaz Hall of Fame. <laughs> now, uh, who was, oh, who was, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Rusev. Oh, my God, Rusev is like the country hillbilly guy who had Big Mark Trump Holland. taken over. Yes, uh, with the non-Russian country accent, or the country accent with, like, the tinge of Russian or mm-hmm. Bulgarian, Bulgarian accent. Um <laughs> Like, it, it's so cool to see those guys do something outside of what you see on Raw and SmackDown. And you can tell that whoever produces just like, look, guys, this is what we're going to do. Just have fun. Just whatever. Just do what you want to do. You know, when um when Carl Anderson was talking about Luke Gallows buying that car and stuff, he said, well, I bought something that you didn't buy. Well, I bought something that you couldn't get, and that's this green jacket. And it's like, really? Like, out of all the things you can think of, like, he can't buy a green jacket. Like, it was that, that stuff just comedic. That stuff just just gold, man. Comedic gold, in my opinion. Well, and we still don't know who the sea monster, who's playing the sea monster. But I'm I'm hoping that we, you know, Rusev is is out with uh, I think a shoulder injury, but maybe Big Bartholomew will be able to uh, make a surprise uh, entrant uh, at WrestleMania and uh, take on the sea monster. I think that that would be. Awesome and a perfect ending to the South Paul Regional Wrestling. Now, my question is, what was the? Re- I mean, did did WWE even release any reason why they did it, or is it just sort of like, hey, let's do this and just put it out there and see what happens? Like, well, was there any reason for them to even do it? Uh, as far as I know, it's only been released on YouTube, so it's never been on the network or anything like that. Um, it was just hyped through, uh, it was either their Twitter or their Instagram page, but that was very minimal hype to it. And, uh, it's just a, a big commercial for, for KFC Georgia gold. So 
if this is as successful as I think it, it has been, then, uh, maybe, maybe we'll get some new installments or maybe they'll do like a Minnesota territory one or a Calgary one, you know, where, where they do some more of these goofy, funny things. But as I said at the top of this discussion, it's kind of overshadowing, overshadowing their, uh, current product because wrestling should be this entertaining. Uh, you know, and to, to do it in two or three hours each week might be a little tough, but, you know, throw in some of these fun things every once in a while, uh, and give us more reasons to watch Raw or SmackDown. You're right about that. Like, I don't understand. Like, obviously somebody in WWE has a sense of humor. It's the reason why we have softball. Like, why is this person not writing for Raw? Why is this person not writing for SmackDown? Um, you know, why is it not, why, why are there, their actual shows? Not as creative as what as this huge as you as you just told us this huge commercial for KFC like why is this the most creative thing they've done in like the last two to three years? Yeah, it's 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 crazy and it's it's way better than Camp WWE or anything those story time uh, cartoons that they do on the network. You know, I. Even if they can't put it on their regular programming, do something like that on the network and let people have some fun with wrestling. You know, if I can just jump like in and real quick and comment, I think this is I think this is proof that WWE wrestlers really know what the hell they're doing for the most part. Because, you know, this this is something, you know, yeah, it's probably going to be somewhat scripted, but you know they ad-libbed the hell out of this shit because most of them lived it. So what's going to drive me crazy is we see this and we love it, and then you go back to WWE and see what they put out there, and you guys got to ask themselves, why don't you let the wrestlers take what they're doing here and take it out there in front of the big audience, in front of the ring? Well, the, the last time we got to see uh, Gallows do something uh, comedic was when they were doing the old day skits and they were doing the uh, uh, balls in the pickle jars thing which was awful. But Tex Ferguson is obviously a more PG version of Sex Ferguson, a character he's been doing for years. He's a funny guy. But when they overproduce and overscript uh, stuff for guys like uh, Gallows and Anderson, then it falls flat. Let these guys go out there and run with it. Do you think that Chris Jericho would be who he is today if he wasn't able to go out and do uh, the 1,004 holds uh, promo, you know, those things, you can have a basic format, but let these guys run with it a little bit and, and come up with some of their own stuff. Exactly, Zane. Um, you know, like, most of these guys and stuff like, uh, most of the guys who have 15, 20 years and stuff, with the exception of John Cena, I think, uh, John Cena, Randy Orton, the guys like AJ Styles, uh, Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, uh, Chris Jericho, et cetera, et cetera, has, uh, years of experience cutting their own promos uh, on the Indies, in New Japan, at TNA. Um, obviously, these guys are very good at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, you sign these guys for a reason, not just because they're great in-ring talent, but because they're able to get themselves over with either facial expressions or words. Uh, that's what made you know wrestling so good when we were younger, back in the 80s and even in the 90s and stuff, is that because nobody cut a promo the same way. Nobody talked the same way. Everybody had, of course, you know, the biggest uh, catchphrase of all time in wrestling. Austin 316 says, I just whooped your ass. You know, that wasn't that wasn't scripted. That Nobody was in the room saying, okay, Austin, after you beat, you know, Jake Roberts, you're going to say this right here. It was just, hey, put a mic in front of this guy and let's see what he says. You know, uh, when when something is that natural, uh, you know, that's when you really connect with the fans, when you're, when you're actually giving yourself. When, when you have to cut a promo uh, that's not scripted and you have to come up with it on your own and stuff, that's when it's very natural. Uh, guys don't mess up as much, and it really connects with the fans and stuff. And I think that uh, with this huge-ass commercial, they've seen that. Hopefully, you know, their eyes are opening to the fact that, hey, we need to give these guys, you know, a little bit more freedom when it comes to, to talking and stuff and being on the mic. All right. Any anybody else got anything else to say about South Paul Regional Wrestling before we go to count two? All yep, right. I'm good. Uh count two. As I said, this is all non wrestling wrestling stuff uh for this three count. 
Um, the WWE Hall of Fame is coming up uh, the two nights before WrestleMania, the Friday before WrestleMania. Um, we can go down the entire list of inductees, but the thing I want to talk about most is the Rock and Roll Express being put in, and somehow, some way, Jim Cornette is inducting them. I want to start with Killa Kev because he just met with uh, Cornette uh, last week. Uh, I think that was before this news broke. But how shocked were you when you heard that Cornette was inducting the Rock and Roll Hall of uh, Rock and Roll Express in the WWE Hall of Fame? Yeah, that was before the announcement, and uh, I'm I'm not I'm not stunned by it. I think that's a that's an excellent choice. I'm sure Cornette's going to roast the hell out of him. Yeah, I'm, I, it's definitely uh, the appropriate person to put him in. But how shocked are you that Cornette is willing to do it and that WWE is willing to let Jim Cornette have a live microphone in 2017? Everybody's got their price, and WWE obviously sees the value in this. And Jim Cornette knows when where where the sure money is at, so I'm sure they they had a great meeting of the minds and and came to a mutual uh, conclusion on on just how this whole affair is going to go down. What are your thoughts, Will Huckabee? Um, I think that this is one of those situations where uh, guys put aside their politics and egos and their differences and came together for a greater good. Um, me myself personally, and I don't know how you. Of course, Zane, you know you have a, a different. You may have a different opinion, but I think that the Rock and Roll Express is uh, one of, is, is the greatest tag team of all time. Um, you know, Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson are still tearing up the rest of the indie scene as of right now, and and they're putting in great performances. They're just as good as they've ever been. Um, I do agree with Tilly Kev when I said when I when he says that Jim Cornette uh, was the right choice. Um, I don't believe that anybody else really knows the Rock and Roll Express or has made as much money with the Rock and Roll Express, who is not an owner or a booker, than Jim Cornette. Um, they tore up the Southern wrestling scene for decades, um, you know, traveling from town to town, you know, feuding with the Rock and Roll, I mean, feuding with the Midnight Express and the Fantastics, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that with Jim Cornette, you know, uh, Everybody, everybody that I've talked to uh, when this news was announced and stuff was really worried about what is Jim Cornette going to say. Um, I agree with you, Zane. I think that there's going to be a lot of roasting. Um, there may or may not be a little bit of political tinge to his speech, um, as we've seen a lot of celebrities do quite often recently. Uh, but I think that, you know, for the Hall of Fame ceremony, this was, hey, look, you know, they're inducting the Rock and Roll Express. Will you induct these guys? Yeah, sure, no problem. These are my friends. These are people I've known for 20, 30 years. Uh, this is a huge honor for them. Of course, I will I will induct them into the Hall of Fame. Um, I think that this has nothing to do with politics. I don't think that this is going to turn into some long-term deal with Jim Cornette working for WWE because he said countless times in countless shoots that he'd rather blow his brains out than work for Vince McMahon again uh, or, or, you know, live in New York or Connecticut. Um, you know, he's a Southern guy who likes to be in the South. Uh, so I don't think this is going to turn into a long-term deal. I think this is a one and done. I think that he's going to go out there. He's going to be very professional. Uh, there's going to be a lot of laughs, a lot of stories told and stuff, and it's going to be a good night for everybody. Well, the way I kind of view it, it's not just putting the Rock and Roll Hall of, uh, Rock and Roll Express into the WWE Hall of Fame, because whenever you think of the Rock and Roll Express, you also think of the Fantastics and especially the Midnight Express with Jim Cornette. So it's kind of all of them going in because that's a package deal. You can't think of the R&Rs without the Midnights. Um, so I, I do agree with you guys that, that he is the right person. I'm wondering if Triple H brokered the deal because usually, you know, to bring in Bruno San Martino, Vince McMahon stayed away from it, and it was – Triple H that that brokered that deal to get uh, Bruno there. When it was Ultimate Warrior, it wasn't Vince McMahon making those phone calls. It was Triple H making those phone calls, doing the legwork on that. So, you know, I, I, I think it's awesome that, that rock and rolls are going in, and I think it's awesome that Jim Cornette is going to be there, and I cannot wait to hear that speech. I wonder if, they're, if he's going to take up so much time, they're going to have to send Kane out like they did a couple years ago with Mr. T. So it should it should be an entertaining night, and I, I think that they should be the uh, 
last people to go in that night just just because I think more people will be anticipating Jim Cornette's speech than anybody else's. But as I say, go ahead. I'm going to say, like, really, to tell you the truth, I'm more excited to hear what the hell Ricky Morton's going to say uh, than Jim Cornette. Yeah. Um, after, yeah, after Morton stripping, like, wasn't that great of a promo guy. No, but he's such a great storyteller. Um, and I was going to say, after spending, you know, after being in a locker room, locker room with him several times, on several occasions and stuff, man, um, Ricky Morton might not be known as a great promo man, but he is such a great storyteller, especially back in the locker room. Uh, you know, giving guys advice or telling us stories about how it was on the road back in the 70s and 80s and stuff, man. Uh, I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure Robert Gibson's not going to say a whole lot, but I know without a doubt that, uh, Ricky Morton's definitely going to have a story or two. And he's definitely going to give us one for the, for the, for the night. Okay. All right. So as saying that, let's go ahead and, and go through the list of inductees. Um, Eric Legrand, former, uh, NFL player. Uh, is, uh, receiving the Warrior Award, uh, at the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Um, posthumously awarded the Hall of Fame is Ravishing Rick Rude, and, uh, he will be inducted by Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, long overdue. Um, ask my buddies, the Razor Ramones, who, if anybody cut a promo better than Ravishing Rick Rude, um, Beth Phoenix is going in. She is the only uh, woman listed going in so far this year. Uh, Diamond Dallas Page will be going in, and he is being inducted by Eric Bischoff. So another uh, kind of crazy uh, um, inductor uh, making a speech that night. Uh, Theodore Long is going in, and he will be inducted by uh, Bradshaw and... Ron Simmons, uh, former members of the Acolytes. Um, as we said, Rock and Roll Express being inducted by Jim Cornette. And uh, Kurt Angle is going to be inducted by John Cena. Um, Will, who, which, other than the Rock and Roll Express being inducted, what are you most looking forward to that night? Um, let's see. Who did you say for Beth Phoenix? Uh, I think the DDT. I really feel like DDT should be inducted the same year that Scott Hall and, and Jake Roberts were inducted. Um, because if it wasn't for DDT, uh, neither one of those gentlemen would be where they're at today. I mean, and then also because it's a DDT yoga. Uh, you know, Chris Jericho swears on the down by mentions it on his podcast every week. You know what I'm saying? I think that it's long overdue for DDT. Well, um, let, let me let me just let me just interject right there though. If he had gone in the same year as Jake and uh, Hall, wouldn't people just say he didn't deserve it? He he just got in because he's friends with those two guys. This to um, me, I, I wouldn't have felt that way. Well, to me though, this shows that he got in on his own since they waited a few years. You are. That's, um, with, that's just my opinion. With the exception of, of DDP, I think that uh, I'm very excited to see uh, Teddy Long going to the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, nobody, in my opinion, um, very few people have gotten as far as he's gotten uh, from coming from such meager beginnings, you know. Um, Teddy Long uh, actually started off, you know, cleaning up and stuff, cleaning up, you know, in Jim Crocker promotions after the shows was over with. Uh, he used to drive around, you know, the talent and everything. He was a driver. Uh, and then they gave him the opportunity as a referee, and then he became a manager, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so he, you know, when you talk about people saying, oh, pay your dues, pay your dues, uh, very few people have paid as many dues as, as Teddy Long has. Um, and not only that, but to be as successful as he was, uh, in the time when he came in, and, and Teddy Long's not a, a big man physically by, uh, by no stretch of the imagination. He's a very small, uh, gentleman who had to put up with a lot of stuff in a very tough, tough sport. Uh, and he ended up grinding and becoming very successful. Uh, so I'm very excited to see, you know, I'm very excited to hear that he actually made it to the Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I feel like there might be some people who may disagree, uh, but in my opinion, out of everybody in this class and stuff, uh, I think that he worked the hardest to get to where he, where he got to. Well, I'll, I'll throw in something other than, uh, probably Earl Hebner, who will probably never go into 
the WWE Hall of Fame. I think that Teddy Long is deserving. He he started off, as far as I know, started off as a referee. Then he he was a manager in WCW, uh, especially with uh, the tag team of Doom. And then uh, Rose, uh, I think he was back at uh, referee again in WWE when he came over to WWE and then became a uh, general manager. And yeah, he's, he's a great success story. So I, I have no issue with him going in. Oh yeah. Well, like in his shoot video and stuff, um, one of his shoot interviews, he actually talks about the fact that, you know, he actually started off just cleaning up, you know, handing out flyers and stuff and cleaning up the building afterwards and having to drive guys around, you know, having to uh, pick up flair from the airport and, uh, pick up the four horsemen and pick up this guy, pick up that guy, you know, and driving them around and not getting a lot of appreciation uh, and not really feeling very appreciated with his job and stuff. Uh, there were times where, you know, he said that the, the office at, at Crocker Promotions, uh, because he lived in Atlanta, they would tell him, hey, drive him to Charlotte for a show. He'd get him to Charlotte for a show and they would tell him, oh, we don't have anything for you tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. because he didn't work, and because he didn't work that night, he didn't get paid, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so, as the guy, you know, he, he really deserved it. He worked really, really hard to get where he's at. Right. Kelly Kev, other than the Rock and Roll Express, uh, what are you most looking forward to uh, for the WWE Hall of Fame? Kelly Kev, are you there? All right. Sorry, well, had, a, had a technical difficulty there. Uh, oh, no problem. For me, the other thing I'm looking up forward to other than the Rock and Roll Express is I'm really kind of morbidly curious about Kurt Angle's induction. Really? How so? Well, you know, he spent all this time away from WWE. It'll be interesting to see how he reflects over his WWE career. Do you think that he'll mention uh, his, what, 11 years at uh, TNA Impact Wrestling? Probably just in passing. Okay. I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't think he would probably feel it appropriate to mention anything being inducted into WWE's Hall of Fame. Because did he, did he really mention a lot about WWE when his induction in TNA's Hall of Fame? I, I don't know. I did they have a ceremony? I thought that they just mailed him a a certificate or something. What what they mail him like a fifty dollar gift certificate to Don West's uh, website or something? Yes, yes, probably or <laughs> or an owl t shirt or something. Uh, so ridiculous, so ridiculous. But no, I no it'll it'll be interesting to see what it'll be interesting to see if WDBE really does anything with them. Yeah. Hopefully, oh, I, they don't let him step in a wrestling ring again. I'm just saying, please, learn your lessons I, from Sting. Don't do it. I'm pretty sure that, that he'll, uh, after Mania, he'll he'll be in the general manager of Raw spot. I, I just, I think that that's what they're, that what's the, they'll do. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, Eric Bischoff's uh, induction of Diamond Dallas Page. I think that'll be interesting. Uh, since they've known each other for so long, I don't know if they're still currently friends, but uh, I think that that will be an interesting dynamic there on the stage. As long as Vince doesn't come out and uh, hug Eric Bischoff, though, I'll be fine. Um, Kill a Kev, uh, do you have any uh, issues with them not inducting a celebrity this year? Nope, none at all. What about you, Huck? Um, no, I really can't think of really, like, too many celebrities that actually deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, really, I think they could have stopped at Pete Rose and I'd have been fine. <laughs> well, there's one glaring omission, and you're going to kick yourself for not for not saying this. Cindy Lauper, she definitely deserves to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Yes, she does. Okay, I will give you that. Yes, she does. Without Cindy Lauper, there's no rock and wrestling connection. So, yes, I will give you that. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> All right. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about the Hall of Fame before we move on to count three? No, I'm good. Okay. Yep. Count three, and I saved it for count three because of three people. Paige, Xavier Woods, Brad Maddox. Now, if our listeners don't know what we're talking about, if they want to Google it, then they can Google it. We're not going to get into the... Uh, all the details about it, but the basic is that someone has been hacking a bunch of celebrities' uh, phones, personal email accounts, what have you. A uh, videotape has been released uh, of Paige, Xavier Woods, and Brad Maddox uh, indulging in some adult activities. 
these were three adults that were consenting to do what they did. My take on it is that if you are laughing and lauding over it, then you're kind of a scumbag and you need to have your phone hacked because we all have our own little dirty secrets. On the other hand, when you are in a public profile and all three of these people were signed by WWE, whether it was on the main roster or at NXT at the time, you should be careful with everything. Huck, I know you and I have talked about social media and how young wrestlers should conduct themselves online. What are your thoughts about this whole situation? Um, <laughs> man, um, I can I can never. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm say this first. I could never, with the exception of the steel horse accident uh, several years ago, um, I cannot think of a single incident um, that was this widely talked about in a wrestling locker room in my 10 years um, with so many different opinions. Um, there, of course, everybody, and, and just I'll put it out there, um, every guy in the locker room was obviously like, oh, shit, they're a naked picture of Paige. Hmm, what does she look like sans clothes? So, of course, everybody wants to see it. It's, it's the, you know, driving on the highway, you see a car accident, so, of course, you slow down <laughs> because... You know, you want to see what, what happened. You want to see what it looks like. And the minute they say, oh, there's pictures and video. Oh, you're going to find it. And, of course, people are, hey, man, send me that link. Hey, send me that link. Hey, we're in the locker room. Check this out. Um, and every time something new popped up, um, there was guys. You know, I was in, matter of fact, I was in Applebee's Saturday night uh, when a picture was leaked, a, a, new, a new picture was leaked, uh, the one with her and the NXT women's title. And it was like, hey, this just leaked. Check this out, Will. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. Why? Because I want to see. Um, now, with, with that being said, uh, I, I totally agree with you wholeheartedly, uh, Zane, that this is, what people forget to realize is that these are three consenting adults um, in various, you know, stages, whether it's solo, in a tandem, or in a trio. Um, they're all consenting adults doing what adults do. Uh, there was nothing illegal about what they were doing. Um, you know, you, who am I to judge what somebody decides to do or where they decide to do with it? I'm nobody's judge, you know. Uh, I will leave that to a high power, whether you believe in that or not. Um, I do believe, like you said, Zane, also, I do believe that if you're going to do something like that, you have to be smart about it. You have to realize that if you are a celebrity, uh, whether you're an A-list, B-list, D-list celebrity, whether you're on the main roster overall or whether you're an NXT and you're like newly signed to NXT, uh, once people know that you belong, that you are a part of the WWE uh, family, for lack of a better word, you have to be more careful. You have to conduct yourself differently. If you're going to do that and you're going to record yourself or whatever, you have to be very careful. Uh, you always have to have in the back of your mind okay, what is going to happen if this gets out? You know what I'm saying? Um, how How is this going to look to not only, you know, my family and my friends, but also my coworkers and my employer? What is my boss going to do if this gets out? I don't think that they were really thinking about that because I don't think that at the time they were thinking about the consequences. Um, you know, I'm not a huge judge of time or whatever, but it looks like, that was years ago. Um, they recorded it years ago, uh, and it just got released now. Uh, it definitely doesn't look like it was last week because obviously Brad Maddox hasn't been in WWE in like a year or two. Uh, also, um, I do believe that they should not be punished. Uh, people forget, like, oh, you know, I thought people are talking about Paige and Xavier and Brad Maddox. Like, they did this with the purpose and the intent that they were going to release this to the public to get some kind of notoriety, a la Kim Kardashian. Uh, I don't think that they ever had any intent or purpose for this to ever be seen by the public whatsoever. That this, that these videos and pictures that we're seeing were actually stolen um, from them. You know what I'm saying? That, that somebody was malicious and hacked into somebody's cloud account or stole somebody's phone or their email or whatever the case may be. Uh, but they did something illegal uh, took this property illegally and then released it out to the public 
Uh, and unfortunately, because we don't know who released it, obviously uh, people's first reactions is to blame Paige. Uh, I, I really do hate the fact that, of course, even though she has, you know, that she's not the only person in the video, it's very unfortunate that she is the person being slut-shamed. Uh, she is the only person that, that uh, of course, people are like, oh, well, if they punish her, they have to punish Xavier Woods. You know, you can't really punish Brad Max because he doesn't belong to the company anymore. But it's like, oh, well, why does she need to be punished? Uh, why is it that she is the focal point of this entire investigation, you know? Um, she was, you know, as far as I know, especially from one of the videos and some of the pictures, that was between what, between her and whoever she was involved with romantically at the time, which is A-OK, which is fine, because as adults, people, adults do that. They send, you know stuff to their significant others and stuff. You can't slut shame somebody for doing something that couples do on a daily basis, something that, you know, myself and other people have done, you know, several, several times and stuff. You can't be mad about that. The only thing that you can be mad or disappointed at her is the fact that she wasn't more tough or she or Brad Max, whoever's uh, account got hacked into, wasn't more careful with it. I feel like uh, they should have been a lot more careful with what they have. I, I actually told a friend of mine, if you ever see a sex tape of Will Huckabee, that means somebody broke to my house because I don't have anything. I don't have a cloud account. Um, I don't really, like, save anything on my email or on my phone. Like, if you want to find some of Will Huckabee, it's on a Betamax tape. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're really going to work to find, you know, uh, adult pictures and videos of Will Huckabee because I'm backing all my stuff up on Betamax. And I think, like, me and, like, my uncle are the only two people left in the country who have a Betamax player. <laughs> uh, Killer Kev, uh, do you have anything to add to this conversation? I think that um, you should respect their privacy. Don't watch this shit. It's none of your business. If they wanted you to watch it, they would have invited you to watch it. And... That's about all I've got to say about it. Okay, hold on, Kev. I gotta, Kev. Come on now, Kev. Let's be honest on the show for a second. So you mean to tell me when you heard about the stuff got released that you had no desire to see the pictures? None at all. None. None. Zero. I don't care. I'm, you know, get you know because you know what they're all consenting adults. Great, they got their freak on. Great. I don't care. I don't need to see it. If 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 I want to watch people having sex. I know where the appropriate place to go. I've got porn channels to go watch. I've got websites to go watch. I'll go home and I will go do my wife six ways to Sunday. You know, if, if that's my freak that I'm feeling that night, I don't need to invade somebody else's privacy. No, but what I'm saying is that everybody has, you know, everybody, you see these celebrities, you see these people who are, who are in the mainstream media, uh, celebrities, the media, whatever. And it's like, Oh, you know, you have your celebrity crushes or whatever. It's like all of a sudden there's pictures of your celebrity crush, you know, naked online. Are you not going to go want to see it? Nope, never. I have no interest in it at all. Well, if you guys ever find naked pictures of Oprah or Sandra Bullock or Janet Jackson um, or Susan Lucci from All My Children, please direct them my way. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick man, Will Huckabee. Sick man. <laughs> Can you give us that list then. Say that again, Zane. Can you give that list again? Uh, Oprah, Sandra Bullock, Janet Jackson, or Susan Lucci from All My Children. <laughs> okay, I, I I was trying to figure out your type, but there's there's no type in those four. So okay, all right. <laughs> I'll keep my eyes open for those. You know, I mean, and I'm not inconsistent with this. When the Hulk Hogan sex tapes came out, everybody went to watch those. I'm like. No, thank you. I don't need to see that. And it's not because, you know, I I think it's gross to watch an old man trying to ha have sex. It's just because, you know, that's that's Hogan's life and it's, you know, Love Sponge's life and his wife's life. You know, I'd, you know, if again, if they had wanted us to see that, then, you know, they would have sold it to Vivid or whoever. You know, Son Sonny went out and made a porn video. I watched the shit out of that. She wanted us to see that. I watched that with some great morbid curiosity, and I'll admit I was even entertained by it. But a, but a private tape that had no intention of being released to public, no, I I don't want to see it. I don't care. Don't need pictures. Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, uh, moving on, I got a couple quick notes, and uh, then we'll get into the big question. Um, I've been doing my shirts till WrestleMania gimmick uh, this year again. Having a lot of fun with that, where I wear a different 
uh, wrestling shirt. So you can search Instagram, hashtag shirts until WrestleMania. A couple of my buddies and I are doing that. Uh, today I got an awesome shirt from a local company called United State of Indiana. They've released a line where they've never done any wrestling themed shirts before. Um, but they've released a line of shirts called, uh, Hoosier Mania. And, uh, I got my Indiana 1816. So it's a takeoff on Austin 316. 1816 is the year that Indiana was founded. Um, so I got that shirt in the mail today. And that was my, my current post, uh, for my hashtag shirts until WrestleMania. Uh, have a lot of fun with that. And, uh, next quick note for all of our listeners that have Netflix, if you aren't watching, the first two seasons of Lucha Underground, which are now streaming on Netflix. Go check that out. It's been a lot of fun. Um, really cool stuff on there. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I've got going on. What do you got coming up, uh, Will? Uh, this weekend, um, I think all I have is, um, this company, uh, New Age Pro Wrestling in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, I have no idea who I'm facing, uh, this Saturday coming up. Um, but you know, I've, I've only done I've only worked for that company one time, so you know I'm kind of excited. It's still a young company and stuff; they're it's still getting a feel on the ground. Uh, but I got that coming up this Saturday. Next Saturday, uh, I will be in Nashville, North Carolina, um, for it's WrestleMania weekend. I have one show WrestleMania weekend, um, and only because I didn't want to do like a lot of guys are doing um, and drive, you know, twenty thousand hours in three days and stuff. Uh, I decided to opt out of driving down to Florida and taking place in a bunch of the shows that's going on down in Florida next weekend, WrestleMania weekend. And instead, I'm going to stay close to home, uh, and I'm going to be at uh, NWA Mid-Atlantic in Nashville, North Carolina. Uh, my opponent hasn't been, uh, the name of my opponent hasn't been released yet. Uh, so I'll be there WrestleMania weekend. And then Sunday, I'm going to hang out at the house and watch WrestleMania all day. Um and then, of course, the following week uh, will be my big road trip to Indiana and stuff. So I'm super excited about that. Awesome. And next oh. week we'll, we'll do uh, WrestleMania and uh, NXT TakeOver predictions. Yes. Oh, I forgot to say that I will have um, April 8th, of course, and I'm kind of disappointed you'll have one. But besides having um, my two, you know, two new shirts that I have, the Cartoon Network uh, Incredible Hunt logo shirt, and the old English logo will have to be shirt. I will have an exclusive shirt specifically for Smash Funk Wrestling and the state of Indiana. I will have that shirt available um, that day only. You can't pre-order it. Um, I have a limited amount of shirts and stuff and a limited amount of sizes. Uh, so unless you need anything bigger than a 2X, uh, fans and, and fans and stuff need to contact me for that. But I will have exclusive shirts specifically for uh, Smash Funk. Um, Smash Funk and Smash Mouth Wrestling and the state of Indiana on April 8th. All right. Make sure to save me an extra large. And uh, am I doing something with you on that show? Have we figured that out? Um, I don't think we figured it out yet, but it will be cool. I mean, they have, like, people, you know, escorting um, everybody else to the ring and stuff. You know, people are acting as managers or escorting somebody to the ring and stuff. So um, you might be my personal ring announcer that day, Zane. Yeah, I would love that. That would be cool. Special. Yeah, that'd be I cool. I'm pretty special. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll we'll work on it. Um, uh, Kev, you got anything to plug or anything? Nope, nothing for me to plug this week. Okay, well, stick around because uh, the big question is uh, if our if our listeners haven't been following the Broken Hardy saga with uh, Impact Wrestling, uh, the Hardys uh, refused to sign a new contract with Impact Wrestling. They say that they were low-balled at the last minute or that Impact wanted to take away, uh, uh, wanted to take some of their profits from their independent bookings. So they decided not to stay with Impact. Uh, Impact says that they have intellectual property rights over the Broken Hardy's uh, name, the broken part of the Hardy's name, and uh, their, their, basically their whole characters uh, under the Broken Universe. They went so far as to threaten pay-per-view providers that were uh, showing the Ring of Honor uh, pay-per-view that the Hardys were working, where they ended up winning the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. Um, They threatened them with legal action if any of the broken mannerisms or the broken name uh, 
uh, was used. So uh, I did not watch the show, but I was told that uh, uh, the Hardys played pretty straight lace during that because of the legal threats. Rebby Hardy has come out and said, you know, they have no right to do this. I came up with all the broke, broken Hardy's stuff. I've ran their uh, website merchandise for the last couple of years doing that. My father, Rebby's father, is Senior Benjamin. He had never signed anything with TNA or Impact or anything for his likeness. Uh, obviously, uh, Rebby would know if she had signed away anything with King Maxwell on it. Um, and, you know, you get all into sorts of uh, child labor laws if... Uh, Impact is is having to pay King Maxwell, uh, so uh, he's he's never signed anything. Uh, his parents have never signed anything, um, and she's even uh, said that they've gotten mad because she's uh, said hashtag fuck that owl, the new Impact owl. Um, I, I think that we're probably all in agreement, but I want to hear from you guys. What will? What do you think about the uh, Broken Hardys? Uh, and, and, T- and Impact uh, at this time? I, I think that uh, Impact Wrestling doesn't have a leg to stand on. I think that uh, they're using uh, what I consider a corporate bullying tactic, which is to uh, scare, you know, the new company that you work for, cable providers, and bury you in legal paperwork um, until it just becomes too big of a hassle and you just basically give up. Um, you know, the TNA, before it was Impact, their previous name, TNA Wrestling, was not known for being the most organized of wrestling companies. Uh, to find out that Senior Benjamin, uh, who was, uh, for the most part, a pretty pretty big character uh, in the whole Broken Hardy saga and stuff, um, one of the funnier characters uh, in the Broken Hardy saga, had never signed a contract. Uh, with TNA Wrestling is amazing. Uh, to know that, you know, the whole, with, with Matt Hardy's son, Maxwell stuff, um, they never really signed any contracts as far as, you know, using the likeness of Matt Hardy's son or the whole King Maxwell thing. Um, that's all amazing. Like, that's stuff that you should have, uh, sign all the I's dotted, T's crossed and stuff. That's things that, that should be, should have been handled before they ever appeared on TV to begin with. You would never see this McMahon allow anybody on Raw or SmackDown or NXT, uh, without having some kind of paperwork saying, hey, we own this or we have, uh, you know, this is what we own. We have possession of this. This is what you get. This is what we get. Um, Everything's already signed. There's, there's never any problems when it comes to contracts with WWE. Uh, you don't see guys the WWE is like, oh, well, they don't own this, they don't own that. It's like it's already understood. Uh, that's why you see Cody Rhodes on the Indies not going by Cody Rhodes. He's just Cody uh, because Rhodes is not his legal last name. He wasn't Cody Rhodes until he went to WWE. Uh, they own that name as far as he is concerned. Uh, I think that this was you know, Impact Wrestling and the new owners that be and stuff, I think that they are, they're starting off with the wrong foot. Uh, I really feel that uh, you can't progress by pissing off everybody and them threatening cable providers and stuff is not the best way to uh, gain favor when it's time for you to run a pay-per-view, when it's time for you to look for, you know, pay-per-view outlets and stuff for your shows. Now these people don't want to do business with you because, well, you've already threatened to sue them over something like this, over something mm-hmm. where you you didn't do your job or the previous owners didn't do their job uh, by making sure that they had the correct paperwork and stuff. Uh, I think that if this goes, I don't think that this is going to go to court. I think that this might go, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Arbitration? It might go to mm-hmm. arbitration if it does. Uh, Any way you look at it, the hardest will come out on top uh, and Impact Wrestling will be, once again, will have egg all over its face. What say you, Killer Cav? I'm in agreement with Will. Um, I think uh, Impact Wrestling and Anthem is up the creek without a paddle here. I think all their protests are going to be for absolutely nothing. Um, they want to try to litigate this in court. <laughs> That's fine. Hardys have plenty of money to fight. And, you know, they got plenty of time to fight it, too. Meanwhile, Anthem's got to worry about, you know, trying to get this uh, TV program up and running. They're going to have to worry about uh, making sure that their TV contracts get renewed here in the United States. Um, you know, if that doesn't happen, then they're, then they're done before this thing even gets started. So I think they, they gotta be smart. They really need to pick their battles. Um, they're already losing ground in the ratings 
department uh, with a lot of the decisions they've made. This just needs to be one that Anthem just needs to let go. Um, it's it's not going to do them any good to fight this. It's not going to build any goodwill with any of the fans, especially if, you know, you're you're not going to get the Hardys back at this point. You know, maybe they'll do business with you one day, but they ain't going to do business with you this year over it. That's for sure. So, you know, they, they've already pissed away this year. You know, there might be a future opportunity for them, but there's not going to be opportunity as long as they're out there threatening pay-per-view partners and other wrestling promotions about it. It's it's just dumb. Well, and, you know, what would – how does it help them gain new talent? You know, if you're somebody like Ryback who has gone through all the effort to legally change your name to Ryback so you can keep that, why would he want to go to Impact – maybe vary his character a little bit and then them saying after he's done with his run there, Oh, well we own that. You can't ever use that. We'll, we'll sue anybody that, that lets you put that on TV. You know, they got, they got to think long term. This is short term thinking for impact. Uh, they're rebranding themselves, but they need to, they need to let the, the hardy stuff go. They just, they need to move on. I think Zane, just to, just to kind of, uh, Go along, piggyback off of what you were just saying. It's not just established guys that they need to worry about. Uh, younger guys, guys who are on the Indies and stuff. I mean, me, me myself, you know, when I heard about it, it's like, well, I don't want to go to Impact Wrestling. Um, A, because I know, like, oh, well, I spent all this time trying to be creative, start this own storyline, you know, build this character, and then as soon as I leave, oh, well, we own that. You know, I have to worry about you suing me uh, for something that I created. Um, that's that's not the best way to gain you know new to gain new talent period whether it's established you know former WWE talent or guys from the Indies nobody's going to want to work for you if they know as soon as they leave or as soon as something happens um, when it's time for contract signing you're going to try to lowball them and try to stick it to them and then when they say no and they don't bend over and take a dick in the ass you're going to try to sue them and put them in court and stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, I didn't even think about it on the uh, up and coming wrestler side of it too. Yeah, why would you want to sign with a company that you don't know is going to be there in a few years, and they're going to try to take your gimmick after you're gone? It's just, it's, it's not long term thinking on their part. They're trying to make a couple bucks now when they could be costing themselves millions of dollars later on. All right. Well, um, anything else nerdy that you guys want to talk about, you nerds? Uh, Shibata went in the New Japan Pro Wrestling Cup. Oh, go on. Tell us. <laughs> um, for people, for fans and stuff, I'm pretty sure that, uh, Stevie J, they're like, we'll talk about this Thursday. Um, but Shibata, uh, they just had the, the New Japan Cup, uh, which is like a four day, you know, tournament slash four days of shows in, in, the, in this tournament and stuff, uh, involved a huge chunk of the New Japan, uh, roster and stuff. Uh, finally ended a couple of days ago, actually ended yesterday or day before yesterday, um, with the winner getting a shot at whatever, uh, title, New Japan title that he won, whether it was the Never Overweight, the Intercontinental or the IWGP heavyweight title and stuff. Uh, the main event really surprised the hell out of me. Uh, it was Shibata versus Bad Luck Fale, uh, from the Bullet Club. Um, completely and totally shocked that Bad Luck Fale was in the finals. Uh, even though he is without a doubt the largest man on the New Japan roster, um, you really just don't see a lot of him. And when he is in the ring and stuff, it's usually in, in multi-man tag team matches. Um, three ways, you know, six mans, eight mans, ten mans. Um, and he usually has a very small role in those. Uh, most of his matches were very short. There was like 10 to 15 minutes at the most. Uh, while Shibata was wrestling 30, 45 minutes, um, every match. Uh, they actually, I haven't, I, uh, their match was, I, I was actually very surprised at their match. Uh, I was a lot faster paced than I thought it was. Uh, Shibata has certainly grown in the last year, uh, as far as being an on-screen talent. The, the fans of New Japan have really, really gotten behind him and stuff. Uh, and he, in my opinion, he was the correct winner. Uh, I think that if Bad Luck Fale would have won, it really would have caused a bigger problem uh, in the Bullet Club than what they have right now between uh, Kenny Omega and Adam Cole, baby. Uh, and so, like, with, with Shibata winning the New Japan Cup, uh, he has officially made it known that he is going to be challenging Okada in the next couple of weeks 
for the IWGP heavyweight title, uh, which I'm super excited to see. Uh, those two guys are at the top of the game. This is going to be such a very hard-hitting, fast-paced match. I'm going to love it. This is probably that'll be probably like the only match that may come close to the Kenny Omega Okada match uh, from Wrestle Kingdom. Okay, and one other thing that we neglected to mention: Christopher Daniels took the Ring of Honor uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Any thoughts on that? Finally, uh, <laughs> finally, he he's finally the always champion. Uh, you know, he's like one of the original. Uh, besides uh, the Briscoes, he was like, uh, actually, no, just Jay Briscoe, because Mark Briscoe wasn't on the first ever ROH show. I think uh, Christopher Daniels and Jay Briscoe are the only two people currently on the ROH roster that was there on the first show. Um, I think it's a long time coming. I think that Christopher Daniels, uh, while he may not be the most athletic guy on the roster, uh, while he might not be the most physically imposing guy on the roster, I think that mentally, psychologically, uh, he is the best guy on that roster. I don't think that anybody, I think that Christopher Daniels has forgotten more, uh, in professional wrestling than most guys on that roster will even know. Uh, and I think that he is a testament to, um, because if you watch Christopher Daniels wrestle, like, you can tell he's lost a step or whatever, but the fact that he's still able to do what he does in the ring, um, and make you forget that he's lost a step in the ring. Uh, it's amazing and stuff, man. Uh, I don't know if he's doing DDP yoga, what his workout regimen is, man, but he is, he is pretty amazing, man. And, uh, it, it's really cool that he is the, the guy and stuff at ROH right now. Well, when, when I ha- last saw our, our friend, the prophet Rick Craig, who is now, uh, Mr. Richard Wright, he asked me my thoughts on it, and I said, uh, it's okay, whatever, it's not that, and he's just like, oh, I just think it's cool that that's uh, the first time that Daniels has had a uh, quote-unquote world heavyweight championship, and I said, what? I had just assumed that he had held the ROH championship in the past. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 he's been around forever. It's it's very nice that, that he got this honor be- before he's... Uh, on his way out or anything, you know, he was one of the last guys uh, to be signed by WCW, wasn't he? And he never made it on air because they had got bought out right before his contract went through. And, you know, he's been around for a long time and, and it's, it's nice to see him get some accolades. Exactly. Uh, and also like there's a video uh, going around when John Cena was training. It's like a wrestling training video or whatever. And I don't know if you've seen it or not, Zane, where it has a, a very young John Cena when he was doing the whole um, prototype gimmick, him and Samoa Joe, uh, and Christopher Daniels is one of the assistant instructors um, at Pro Wrestling SoCal, I do believe it is, uh, where Samoa Joe and, and John Cena both trained at and stuff. So uh, not only you know has he been around the world wrestling and stuff, but he's also trained and or assisted uh, with the training of some of your some of the top uh, wrestling. Uh, superstars today. Yeah, don't you think it's odd? And and we won't go on a long tangent here, but L.A. used to have a really cool wrestling scene. You had uh, uh, UPW, you had uh, NWA Hollywood, um, you had the New Japan L.A. Dojo, um, and now you don't really hear much coming out from L.A. other than PWG, but they bring in people from all over the country. So I, I don't know, I just think that's odd that that's not a hotbed as it once was. Well, you know, everything goes in cycles. At one moment, you know, California was a hotbed with, like you said, with all of those companies and stuff. Uh, and things just went from there, it went to New York, um, with, you know, uh, Tier One and ROH and, um, NYWA and, and all these other, what, CZW and stuff like that. And now it's, it's kind of moving towards the South, uh, when you got AWE and, and Evolve and, uh, FIP. And all of the PWX and AML and all these companies and stuff uh, that start start starting to blow up and stuff in the the southeast. So everything goes in cycles. Right, right now, I think it's the south turn, uh, but I think that eventually we'll see you know once again uh, the west coast make a rise when it comes to professional wrestling. You know, just to break in on that real quick, mentioning that you know it's the south time. Um, Danny Cage, former guest on the show, just announced a few days ago that the Monster Factory is going to be expanding to Atlanta, and that uh, branch is going to be ran by QT Marshall. Yeah, yes. i just seen that. Uh, actually, they're moving right out, like, I guess they're, the out, they're right outside of Atlanta. 
um, in between Atlanta and Gainesville, I do believe. Uh, with the Athens, Georgia, I think they're moving to. So it's right outside Atlanta. Um, but yeah, that's still the Atlanta area, which is, in my opinion, when I heard about that, Kev, I was like, oh my God, not another wrestling school. Like, there are so many wrestling schools in that area now. Um, now you have the Monster Factory, Georgia, or what are they calling it? Monster Factory South? Or the no, Monster, Monster Factory, Factory Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, so you have Monster Factory, Georgia. Uh, Luke Gallows and uh, Joey Mercury just opened the Bullet Club Dojo. Uh, former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, uh, Murder One, or Tag Team Champion, sorry, Murder One, along with Jimmy Ray's. Um, they have Russell Tech. Uh, Curtis Hughes has his school. Um, AR Fox now owns WWA4. Uh, <laughs> like, there are schools on top of schools on top of schools, like in the Atlanta area. Uh, and I'm just so afraid that it's going to become oversaturated, uh, so oversaturated that it's going to, that it's going to cause the infrastructure of Georgia wrestling to, or not just Georgia, but Southern wrestling to collapse on itself. Uh, well, I feel like it's, it's, go ahead. I was just going to ask, is Sarge still running the power plant? No, the power plant is now WWA4, uh, which used to be owned by Mr. Curtis Hughes, uh, Total Protection Curtis Hughes, which is now owned by AR Fox. Uh, if you watch, you know, Lucha Underground star A.R. Fox and stuff, he now owns that. Uh, and Mr. Hughes has bought another school. He, he has opened up another school to start training people. Um, I feel like if, if the Monster Factory were going to move down south, uh, maybe South Carolina or, t- I think that Tennessee would have been a better fit for the Monster Factory. Um, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, maybe even Florida. Um, there's not a lot of, even though, like, around the Miami, Orlando rest area, there's a lot of wrestling, but outside of the Miami, Orlando area, there's no wrestling really in Florida. And if there is, there's a lot of very small local indie companies and stuff. So oh, I think we should probably... Our buddy Tugboat is is uh, got a school and uh, a promotion down in the St. Petersburg area, so keep an eye on that. I will. But that's all I wanted to say about that. I think that they should they should have went to Atlanta. They should have either went a little a little north into South Carolina, uh, either west to Tennessee, or went further south down to the Florida. Okay, guys, I just want to clock it right now. We have talked for about uh, over an hour, maybe an hour and fifteen minutes of a wrestling podcast. We have not talked about one single angle. We haven't talked about one single match. This was our first non wrestling wrestling podcast, and I'm very proud of us. Yeah, it was so much going on in wrestling this week, man. Oh, my goodness. The last couple weeks have been crazy for professional wrestling. It makes me so proud to be a part of wrestling, whether people consider it be good or bad. It still brings attention to pro wrestling and stuff. Uh, and, and it's just it's just a really exciting time. I think that right now pro wrestling is going through its, its change right now. It's like, you know, from a larva to a butterfly and stuff. Right now we're in the cocoon stage. It's about to bust open. Uh, it's about to bust wide open and stuff, man. Awesome. All right. Well, next week we will do WrestleMania and NXT TakeOver. You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network.